Well, hello. This is the first video on the channel, and I could not be more happier, more, I could not happier, not more happy, that's like, okay. Grammar. Pardon me, uh, I don't have a tripod to use right now, so I'm sitting down. I like it though, I kind of feel like I'm talking to very important people and discussing very important news, which I am. You excited? Because I'm excited. Like, be more excited. Like, like this video, be more excited. Come on guys, like, this is great. Okay, first thing I'd like to discuss is something that blew my mind. <laughs> I don't even know it it messed me up so as you might know Mark Hamill does the voice for the Joker and like everything <laughs> super super talented voice actor like kudos to him he's amazing at what he does anyway someone I think the original person was at cinnamon underscore Luke on Twitter posted a photo of the Joker character and put Mark Hamill's name specifically pointed out that the word Arkham is in his name. It freaked me out. Like genuinely freaked me out. Like Illuminati confirmed freaked me out. The best part about it was that Mark Hamill himself <laughs> replied to the tweet and said, embarrassed to admit I never noticed this until the Bat fans brought it to my attention. Fans are awesome. Could you guys just like, I don't know, find something cool with my name? It's Sally LaMonaco. I don't know, figure it out. I like dinosaurs and Disney and um, chocolate. Now recently Zack Snyder came out and admitted that the Joker and the Riddler were almost in Batman vs Superman and that's kind of like a big piece to just throw out there. The two most popular villains were you know just like almost in this movie. Wow. I'm kind of glad though because I feel like it would have been a little too soon to have the Joker and Batman interact again when the Dark Knight wasn't like that far behind in terms of when the films were made. But you know the Joker is in Suicide Squad but I'm glad that it is like its own entity and not really involved with a Batman movie yet. And you wouldn't want them to make the same mistake that with Sony where they just kind of put too many villains into one movie and people just kind of lost it. Um, usually when movies try to do two villains or three like too much, too much, too much, can't handle it. There's only so much you can fit in an hour and a half but that being said I would love if there were a sequel with the Riddler I'd love to see more of the Riddler because there are so many versions of the Joker it would be kind of cool to see how they would do other villains I don't know give me your thoughts what do you think on that do you think they should have had the Joker or the Riddler in this movie or do you think it's fine as is and if you want to read about it and get links to the full article then you can check out DC Comics News I will have the links to it in the description below. In other Batman related news, Telltale Games is creating a Batman game. It's really cool the information that's coming out about it. What's really cool about this is that you're not just playing as Batman in this new game. Apparently you can also play as Bruce Wayne. There's no footage out yet of it but they are kind of explaining it as being more of a comic book feel and look to it rather than photorealistic type of games that they have out now. But it will be rated M for Mature so you can guarantee that that there will still be plenty of violence to enjoy. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to learn more about it, because I'm not much of a gamer, I'll be like straight up to admit that, you can definitely click in the link below. Start saving up now. <laughs> in honor of Batman vs Superman, the new film, as you might know, DC Comics News has put together sort of like the history of both characters, Batman and Superman, and their journey through comics, and their journey through film and television, so you can see kind of the evolution of each character and how they ended up in a film together. So it'll be interesting to see their past relationships from other writers and other creators, but in the same company. And then when you go see the movie, you can be like, ah, makes sense. Or like, wow, they've come so far as characters. And lastly, there's an exclusive interview that you can only find on our website where we got to interview production illustrator John Gallagher. Currently, he is working on CW's The Flash, and his artwork is amazing. I definitely suggest checking it out if you're a comic book fan. The interview is really interesting, and he talks about his favorite DC artwork and what's inspired him in the past. Basically, just how it is to be an illustrator, which is really interesting to me because that's what this company was built on originally, was just illustrators and them creating different superheroes and stories behind them. So it's really interesting to see how comic books helped him basically become a better artist. So 
if you want to check out that interview. Again, link is down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. And I mean, like, why wouldn't you? If you like anything comic book related, why not subscribe? Because you can see me every week and I can talk about it with you. You can definitely follow us on all social media sites. You can follow me and go to my channel if you'd like. Again, links everywhere. Link for you. Link for you. Links for everyone. I feel like Oprah. I will see you next week. How about that? You ready to go on a date next week? You just see me?